Hi, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan and today we're going to be making a very classic Vietnamese dish called Bung Thật Đương Chảy Ỏ which is a noodle bowl with grilled meat, obviously I'm making it vegan, and spring rolls. You can use store-bought spring rolls if you want. I actually have found lots of vegan ones available at either like the regular grocery store like Zayers, Loblaws, Fortino's, or you can go to the Asian markets and they have a lot of like vegan ones there as well. So I've seen them at BNT's, at TNT's. Um, just check the ingredients to make sure there's no animal products in it. For the most part, I've been able to find vegan spring rolls at the grocery store. However, if you would like to make your own, I have a recipe on my blog, the vegan.com as well as on my YouTube channel, The Viet Vegan. You're welcome to come subscribe over there and check it out. But today we're gonna be making a marinated, it's supposed to be grilled, but I don't really feel like grilling it. And if you don't have access to a grill, perfect. You probably have access to an oven. So I'm gonna be making it in the oven this time. This is something that my mom used to do with like chicken wings. So I feel like I'm doing it the same with soy curls today. Uh, I hope you guys are excited, having a great day and enjoying this veg virtual food fest. Yeah, so we're gonna start off with marinating the meat. So first we have to rehydrate the soy curls. Now if you guys aren't familiar with soy curls, they're basically dehydrated soybeans that are like pressed and layered together so they have like a flaky chicken-like flavor. You can find them at Coven, which is in Hamilton. Um, I've also seen them at Zero Waste Bulk in bulk. Um, you can also order them in bulk by the box from Zero Waste Bulk as well. And they're probably one of my favorite chicken substitutes because they're uh, dry in the pantry and they keep like pretty much indefinitely. Well, I mean, probably not, but like I keep them forever. Granted, we eat through a box within like a year, like a giant 12 kilo box. To rehydrate these, I just kind of cover them in boiling water. So what I have here is the amount for like half a package. Now they're normally sold in like, yeah, 220 gram bags, but because I buy them in bulk, I try to reduce the amount of plastic that I use. I measured out about half of a bag worth, which is about 110 to 115 grams. So so I've rehydrated with some hot water and then I've drained it and then squeezed out as much liquid as possible. You want to get them as dry as possible but not like desiccated like they were before like dehydrated. So you still want them to be hydrated but as dry as possible so that they have more space in them to soak up the marinade. For the marinade we're going to uh, mix it directly inside the container that we are baking it in. So I have a bunch of different ingredients here. We have some onion. This is uh, just regular cooking onion. Traditionally you would use shallots but um, I don't have any so that's we're gonna use some onion. This is about half an onion. It's probably a lot more onion than you need to but that's okay. More onion more tasty. I have some sugar here. So this is just some white sugar. This is uh, imperative for the caramelization. I have some vegan fish sauce that I'm gonna add in. If you don't have vegan fish sauce, you can just use soy sauce. But um, I found this fish sauce here. I found it at BNT's in Kitchener. So if you want to find it there, they probably have it because that's where I got it from. We're gonna also add some vegetable oil. So you want some something that does well in like high heat. So like a canola, sunflower, and then you're gonna add a little bit of dark soy sauce. So this is mushroom flavored dark soy sauce. That's just gonna add a little bit of extra color and like deep flavor. So we're gonna also press some garlic into the mix as well. We're gonna do two pretty fat cloves of garlic because you know, we like flavor here. All right, so we have our little bowl of uh, marinade here. It doesn't look like it's a lot, but it's pretty potent and full of flavor. So I'm just gonna use a spoon to just kind of gently mix it all up in there. This is the marinade that my mom would use when we were making like grilled chicken, grilled pork as a kid. Obviously, my mom is vegetarian now and I'm vegan, so we don't do that anymore, but you know, the flavors are still really delicious, so. And then we're gonna grab our soy curls and we're gonna add it to our pot. And then you're just gonna mix well. It might be easier just to use your hands. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And we're just gonna mix it by hand. So I have everything here. Now normally um, this would be like grilled on the barbecue, but because they're smaller pieces, um, if you did this with like seitan steaks or tofu blocks, that would be pretty good on the grill. But because these are smaller, I'm gonna bake it in the oven. Um, and my mom used to bake chicken wings in the oven all the time. I'm gonna put this covered in the oven and cook it for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to uncover it for another 15 minutes and let it continue baking. I preheated my oven to 375, so let's go bake that. I have to move the camera because uh, the oven is directly in front of my camera. <laughs> so the next thing that we're gonna prep are the spring rolls. I have the full recipe for the spring rolls on my blog already, so if you guys want the full recipe to that, I believe the organizers will link it somewhere, but it's on the vegan.com. You can just search spring rolls in the search bar. But I'm going to fry up some of those spring rolls right now. Turns out I don't have very much oil left, but that's okay. I'm just gonna use some oil now, and I'm gonna preheat 
some oil for frying. So you just want about like an inch or two. We're gonna preheat the oil to about 350, 375. If you don't have a thermometer um, to measure the temperature of your oil, what you can do is you can just use a wooden chopstick and stick it into the the oil once it's hot enough. The oil should look like it's shimmering and the there should be like air bubbles that are coming out of the bottom of the chopstick quite rapidly. Again, do not do this with a plastic chopstick. It will melt. <laughs> do it with a wooden chopstick. All right, so while our oil is heating up, we're also going to prepare our noodles. So I have some thin rice vermicelli. This is the typical kind of uh, noodles that we want to use for this kind of bowl. Hey, it even has the bowl on the front of the package. It's called bung tui, which means fresh noodles. Um, it's not a very descriptive um, thing, but you're looking for like thin noodles, not like the super, super thin ones, but like medium thin. Um, you can use the thicker ones too. It's not a huge deal. It's just not as easy to eat and the noodles won't pick up as much sauce. I've also got some pickled carrots and daikon here for the bowl as well. It has a little bit of acidity, a little crunch, a little tasty tasty, and it's very good. Um, if you want that recipe, it'll be on my blog as well. Um, Thebeavegan.com. I like to cut the cucumber into like half moons. So I cut in half and then I cut into slices. Okay, we're sitting at 287. And when I put my chopsticks in, the bubbles do form, but they don't come out very fast. So it's not quite ready yet. I'm just gonna pop this into the whole order. And we're just gonna use some chopsticks to push these noodles into the water. Oh, some noodle fell down into the abyss. All right, we got it before it caused a fuss, you know. Uh, I regret. I think I'm gonna move the noodles to another element. The timer just went off for the grilled chicken. Um, I'm gonna have to move you guys slightly. Lid has been removed. We're gonna check the oil. 415 degrees. Oh my. So when you're frying, especially with frozen stuff, um, you kind of want to add it like one or two at a time. and you wanna give it enough space to like move around. So I'm gonna fry three at a time in this pot. And it's looking pretty good so far. When you start to see a side go golden like this, you can just do a little quick turn, unless it doesn't want to. Okay, since it's not turning, I'm just gonna dunk it underneath the oil. I don't have any paper towels, so I'm just gonna use some parchment paper to sort of soak up any oil. Yum. Check the temperature of the oil. 375. They're nice and golden brown, so we're gonna take them out and let them quote, quote unquote drain. Try to get as much oil out of there as possible. I have like a parchment paper line thing, but paper towel or some sort of cloth is better. Careful not to drop it into the hot oil again. And then we continue to fry some more. If you wanted to bake or air fry these, I would recommend brushing them in a little bit of oil and then baking for about like 15 to 20 minutes probably basically until you see that the outside edges are golden um, the more golden the better all right so we're gonna pull these out see how things are going it's looking pretty good obviously it's gonna get more color um, in on the grill than it is in the oven so we're gonna put that back in there so the noodles look pretty ready I'm just gonna take one to try all right, I'm gonna turn off the heat and then we're gonna drain the noodles. Pour some cold water on top of them to rinse like the initial starch off. Then I pour back into the pot. And then I refill that pot with cold water. So that pot is refilled with cold water and this sort of stops the cooking and it sort of rinses out some more of the starch and brings the temperature to a more chill temperature. So while this is doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the noodles into the basket by portion. It's a little time consuming. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking handfuls of the noodles and I'm sort of arranging them in the colander by a clump so that you can take portions of the noodles instead of you know grabbing like one chunk of noodles and breaking a bunch and when you're trying to portion them for later when you're eating and then you let them drain in the colander so that they can you know release the excess water but still be kind of like sticky and chewy and hydrated all right so everything is ready to uh, 
assemble. So we have two uh, giant bowls here. I'm gonna eat these for lunch. I'm very excited. I pulled the grilled chicken from the oven. I mean, grilled chicken, baked chicken, pit moon, I don't know. Soy curls uh, from the oven. If you have like a bigger cooking vessel, then you can have more like surface area for your uh, soy curls to caramelize. So they kind of get this like dark kind of color. Um, whereas most of mine is like kind of this pale color, but that's fine. Mmm. So it's a very savory, subtle flavor. It's not super strong in flavor. You just want it to be like juicy and savory because there's another sauce that goes on top of this dish. So to build the bowl, we have some lettuce going on. Um, I'm gonna grab some noodles. And it's a lot easier to grab these noodles because I've separated them already. I'm gonna add some cucumber. I'm gonna grab some soy curls, you know. Cut up some spring rolls. And then pickled carrots and daikon. I made these the night before and it adds a nice bit of crunch and color on top. So then I toss with a, another sauce called uh, Nukmam Jam and it is a like sweet, tangy, salty, funky, saucy town and it's usually based off of fish sauce but i didn't use vegan fish sauce in this one i used soy sauce i used golden mountain soy seasoning which is what i grew up eating and i like the soy sauce version of it slightly better um, but it's a combination of lime juice garlic chili pe or chili pepper that's like crushed up you can omit the chili if you can't really handle the spice water sugar and soy sauce and so i'm going to pour that on top of this and that is the bowl so this is the bong day all uh, that's the order it is. So, so bung means noodles. Tetnung is like baked or grilled um, meat. And then jaya, which is the spring rolls. And then, so we have a nice balance of freshness, some vegetables. If you want to add a little extra crunch of the peanuts, highly recommend that. That is a good time. And then some saucy goodness. And that is the bowl. It's a lot of work to like make all these individual components, but together all at once. It is so, so, so good. And it's such a refreshing, delicious, savory meal. So the next time you go to your Vietnamese restaurant and they have one of these bowls that are vegan for you, I hope you appreciate it a little bit more because it takes a lot of work to put all this together. <laughs> so again, if you want the recipe for any of these dishes, so the pickles, the sauce, the spring rolls, the uh, grilled meat, the whole bowl overall, um, I'll link it on thevietvegan.com. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you check out my blog. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this virtual uh, veg fest. It's such a cool idea. Um, I'm really missing all the veg fests this year. Normally I love going to every single veg fest. I go to KW Veg Fest um, every year and I love seeing all the vendors and just seeing like what's happening locally in Kitchener because I live in Hamilton, so I'm not that far away from you guys. Um, but it's just like so cool to see how much the veg scene has grown over the years. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye.